Hello folks, Mundane Man here again, and today we're going to do a little maintenance on the uh, 2010 Jeep Patriot. We're going to be changing the spark plugs, uh, I'm going to clean off the map sensor. When it's uh, starting, it kind of seems to search for an idle uh, point and uh, stumbles a bit, so I'm going to hopefully resolve that with uh, new spark plugs and cleaning some sensors. I did put my Altel uh, code reader on it and uh, the live data shows that everything looks relatively normal and uh, there's no uh, misfires and there's no check engine lights or anything so from that aspect it's fine but I just want to change out the spark plugs because uh, they probably are overdue I don't think I've done it for 100,000 kilometers or 60,000 miles so let's get at it. So I already put my handy dandy uh, uh, bar light underneath the hood here that just has uh, friction fits on either side of the hood and uh, This is a great way to illuminate the underside of your hood I'll put a link down below if you're interested in getting one off of Amazon Next step is we're going to pull off this cover and that'll give us access to the coil packs and the spark plugs and over here is the map sensor. I'm just going to get some map sensor sprayer in there and clean it off. Okay, let's get this cover off. Let's just pull it straight up. On all four corners there is these uh, little, no uh, I guess, grommets that uh, knobs on the uh, valve cover uh, fit into those. So that's all that clips on this uh, plastic cover. So we'll set that aside. And here we have one, two, three, four coil packs. And those coil packs are sitting on top of the spark plugs. So all we're gonna do is disconnect each coil pack. And all there is is a press uh, tab here on this connector. And you just pull it straight off. Now they're all, the wire length is all such that you shouldn't have any confusion getting the uh, correct plug in back on each coil. And just be careful you don't yank on the wires. Okay, so there's all four. So again, here's your coils, one, two, three, four. Here's our coil wires that we unplugged. And each coil is held in with a little Torx bit screw there that we will take out now. These are a T30 Torx screw. Don't forget, tidy righty, lefty loosey. We'll get these loosened off. Now I warmed up the engine just a little bit, uh, just so things aren't too cold, but don't over over warm it up. I wouldn't drive right off the highway and then start doing this job. You'll be in a world of hurt. Okay, let's put our screws aside so we don't lose them. That's always a good spot. And let's pull out each coil. And Always check for oil around the base and look down the hole to see if there's any oil in there. Because um, if there is, then there's a sign that the, the O-ring is gone in there and you have a bit of an oil leak. So This looks pretty good. Looks nice and dry. Got a bit of grease, dielectric grease left in it. We'll add some more of that when uh, we put the coils back in. Now, I'm just going to keep each coil in order. Let's put them up here with the screws, just so we are putting the same coil back in the same hole again. And way down there is your spark plug. Hard to see. Okay, these spark plugs have the uh, 5 8 inch base on them. And so I've got my spark plug socket, a long extension, and a 3 8 ratchet. Just carefully thread those out. Hopefully you don't run into one that is super tight because you don't want to end up breaking the spark plug off in there. So we got this one moving nicely. We 
there's a bit of goo at the bottom at the base of that plug and I would say these spark plugs so we can get it to focus were due to be replaced for sure that uh, center electrode looks a little wore out I think the condition of them it looks like normal operation they don't seem to be too fouled up that's for sure okay let's go ahead and take out the other three and see how they look Okay, for the reinstallation, I like to uh, try and keep the spark plug as clean as possible. It doesn't take much to create a miss by getting some dirt or debris on uh, the top cap. So the spark plugs I'm using are the Autolite APP5224, and these are the Platinum brand, and I'll put a link down below. The steel washer that goes on the base came separate. For whatever reason so I'm just gonna thread that back on I'm not back on I'm actually gonna put it on I'm surprised that uh, they don't come pre-installed that's how they keep things cheap I guess and they usually come pre gapped as well so mine uh, 2.4 liter says the uh, spark plug should be gapped at 0 0.044 and when I check this one it is right at 044 but it's always good to check because anything can happen in transportation it's a little loose might even be 0 0.045 but i'm going to say that it's good without having to mess with the the electrode i should also note that there is a narrower edge and uh, an edge that extends a little bit the edge that extends should be closest to the uh, the head of the spark plug so it's hard to tell on camera but if you look at it you can see there is a narrower edge there and a wider edge there just thread that bad boy on there so once these are in and it crushes that washer a little bit that washer won't come off next thing i'm going to do is put a little anti-seize on the threaded part of the uh, spark plug so that way the next guy that comes along won't be facing a uh, seized in spark plug so just a little bit on the threads will do the trick i know this kind of goes against the what i said about trying to keep everything as clean as you can but this will save you some grief if you have to do this job again just print getting anything on the electrode just on the threaded area there Keep your fingers clean. I'm also going to put some dielectric grease on the um, ceramic part of the spark plug just so that the coil stays in there nicely. It can seize on there too, so just a little bit of grease on the ceramic part there. And try and prevent getting anything on the tip of the spark plug. Now, because I'm using an actual spark plug socket, you could use just an extended 5 8 if you wanted to, but I have an extended uh, spark plug socket that has a rubber uh, grommet inside that'll hold the spark plug in place, so that when you put the spark plug in your wrench, or in your socket, it's not going to fall out that easy. So when you lower it down into the, uh, the top of the head, you're not going to be faced with a spark plug dropping and trying to fish it out. So I just gently lower it in there, start to thread it on, and you kind of get a feel, make sure you're not cross threading it. It just, if it's not turning smoothly, uh, back it out and start over again. You don't want to uh, strip off the threads on the, on the cylinder head or on the spark plug for that matter. Okay, so that one is pretty much in. 
you could feel it uh, hitting the base of the head as it, and it also gets harder to turn. So I'm going to just tighten it up a little bit. So as soon as you feel like it's uh, tight enough, just give it about, oh, maybe a quarter turn. They don't need to be too tight and, or else you'll never get them out again. And also um, you don't want to have to break them off trying to get them out because somebody's put a ugga duggas on it to uh, keep it in there. Okay, I'm going to do the next three and uh, that should be getting the spark plugs in there. Okay, we got our spark plugs all in now, so I am going to take uh, each coil and I'm going to put some uh, dielectric grease in there too. That just helps seal it up and uh, give it a good connection. And also I think it prevents any kind of moisture uh, impacting the operation of the spark plugs. So all I'm going to do is just squirt some in there like such and then I'll slip the coil back on the spark plug. Again, I've kept every coil organized here by which cylinder, so I know which one is which. We'll just slide that coil in there. Put our handy dandy torque screw back in there. I'll just get these finger tight for now, and then uh, we'll tighten them back all down. So just a little dab will do ya. Now you don't need to tighten these down too tight, just so that they're firmly in there and you can feel that they're tight enough but not too tight. Just don't over tighten them is the main thing. Now you can see we got all four coils in, so we can connect back our coil wires. And pretty hard to mix up considering the uh, wire length is such that each connector is basically sitting by each coil. And just push it in until it clicks in. There we go. That's the uh, spark plug change part of our program today. Next thing I'm going to do is clean out this map sensor. First thing you got to do in any of these jobs is take off the covers. So this is just kind of a airflow cover. It provides circulation or airflow, sorry, to the uh, intake. Set that aside. Pull back on the red clip here that holds the connector on. Sometimes they can be a little feisty. That one slid back. And we're going to disconnect from the connector. So there's a thumb tab here you need to push so that uh, it releases from the sensor itself. Then you can uh, pull that connector off of the map sensor. Just like that. And I always like to check the connection, make sure it's still good. Like I said, I didn't have any check engine codes or anything, but this just helps get that wire out of the way. And then we're going to loosen off this screw to pull away the, the air hose uh, for the intake. Uh, and uh, then we can spray some cleaner on that sensor. So just a slotted screwdriver can loosen that off. Pull that hose off. Just like that. Inside is our airflow sensor sticking through there. 
and that measures uh, manifold absolute pressure and compares that to barometric pressure and uh, basically if your map sensor is malfunctioning you could see uh, rough idling or uh, the odd miss or poor gas mileage that type of thing again mine hadn't flagged a code so i'm just going to spray some cleaner on it and uh, just make sure it's running at optimum efficiency okay i'm just going to stuff a towel in behind the uh, sensor now don't forget that towel is in there or else you'll be sad with yourself that would just you know prevent too much of the cleaner heading down the uh, intake there the product i'm using is just this uh k or crc sensor clean and uh, it's designed for mass airflow sensors and just make sure you kind of get all the way around the sensor and it also doesn't hurt to spray some inside the sensor wiring just to make sure it is clean so that there's a good contact there a little more for good measure and I'm gonna pull my towel out before I forget it and this stuff evaporates pretty quickly so uh, you don't have to worry about uh, residue or anything left behind that's gonna go down through the intake so just let that dry for a couple minutes and uh, then we'll put everything back together okay let's put our hose back on again I'm not very good working with one hand so sorry about the bad camera angles hose is on we'll tighten that screw back up now it wouldn't hurt to check your air filter at this point as well which just you take these clips off and open this cover off when I'm checking the air filter I need to just uh, take this uh, hose off which is basically a crankcase ventilation hose and I take the intake hose off so that it's easier to get this part of the box off where your filter is now I'm also uh, I'm just going to put a little dielectric dielectric grease on that connector so that uh, it prevents any moisture from getting in there again just a little dab will do ya just put it on top of the connector pins there and let's plug the uh, map sensor back in again and it's a very tight fit because it's uh, basically moisture controlled it's well sealed so you push it all the way through and then you won't be able to pull it off again because that tab has latched down there and just push the red uh, clip back up there to make sure it doesn't come off again and that's cleaning the map sensor okay let's just double check our work we got our coils back in we put in our new four spark plugs that were gapped to 044 uh, remember the good old days when on the label they would put what the spark plug gap was supposed to be but i guess with the internet you can find out anything now and we tighten down all of our coils plug them back in obviously then we uh, pulled the connector off our map sensor and and pulled this hose off the intake cleaned out the uh, the uh, map sensor from the inside put some dielectric dielectric grease on the connector make sure it's well sealed up so let's start it up make sure we didn't make anything worse here before we put all the covers back on nice and dark in here now like I said before I started I did not have any check engine lights So I had a bit of a hesitation on the start there but it hit the high idle right away without uh, any stumbling or hesitation so I am hoping that uh, changing the spark plugs was the major problem because like I said they had been on in there for 60,000 miles so that's probably or 100,000 kilometers so that's probably the limit on um, spark plug life okay so it runs still 
What I'm going to do is put my Alltel on it, make sure all of the uh, readings are still uh, the same as before I started, and I'll show you what the live data is showing us. Okay, so we've got the cable plugged into the top of our Autel. This one is the Autel, what, can't read that, 619. This one, the reason I bought this one is it was relatively cheap and you could easily clear codes with it. So our connector for the, for the OBD1 is under here, there's a metal tab there for whatever reason. And we'll just plug it in. Okay, got our code reader plugged in there. Got the Autel here that has booted itself up. Okay, let's click OK. This takes a minute to uh, boot up, so. Okay, so we're showing uh, no status lights, no codes. Uh, of course, this is uh, the engine's cold, so it's not in a uh, closed loop situation yet. One thing, touch wood, this Jeep I've never had a uh, uh, check engine light come on on it. Even if we go down to read codes, it's going to show nothing, I'm sure. Nothing stored. Uh, nothing pending, I'm sure. Okay. Let's go down to live data here. I did uh, connect the Autel up and didn't find any uh, outstanding codes. So let's see what we have here. Some weird reflection in the screen. Okay, we're in a closed loop. Um, I'm not sure what the load percent means, if that's a fuel load. Um, ECT engine temperature is at 69 Celsius. Uh, fuel ratio, the short fuel ratio is good. And the long map sensor is at 31 kPa. My reading previous to cleaning it was at 28 to 29, which is in the normal range, I believe. So it's interesting that it's a little bit higher, but then again, the vehicle's not completely warmed up. So we'll keep an eye on that one. It's idling at uh, 750. So it seems to be running quite smoothly. Again, it wasn't running poorly, but it just, and even the gas mileage was still good. But um, it just didn't seem to have the zip that it used to. Uh, v power is good, 14 volts, so the alternator is working fine. Charging the battery. Parametric pressure is 92 kPa, which does affect the, uh, the map sensor reading. So we can get to our map sensor again. Map is still at 31. So cleaning it did change the reading, but again it's not at full, well it's close to full operating temperature now. So let's put the covers on and drive it around the block and see what we get for uh, if it performs any better. Okay let's put our air intake cover back on. It just slips into the air filter housing down there. Easy as pie, I always say, and then it fights me. And then just make sure you turn these knobs back so it's tied down properly. There we go. Back in place. Now we've got our plastic cover that goes over the valve cover sitting over here. And again, it's the four knobs on the valve cover. Where are they here? There's one there, one back there, there, and there that you want to line up the cover on. So I usually just kind of angle it up, get those cables, sorry, those hoses in place. Got 
that one, got that one, and it kind of sat on there, and then just kind of bang it into place, get those plugs to uh, sit in there, and then just kind of give it a light tug, make sure you got it in there properly. Okay, let's get my fancy light off of there, and let's just beetle around the block a bit. Okay, I switched to my phone for this part of the video. It's easier to get uh, in my phone holder here. Okay, let's put on the seat belt safety first, or forced. Okay, let's start it up again. Start it up just fine. I mean, again, in the winter, I noticed it stumbled more, and sometimes the first start of the day, it has had trouble finding its uh, idle point. Uh, so that's why I cleaned the map sensor and changed the spark plugs. Spark plugs with regular maintenance. They say you should uh, clean your map. Uh, mass airflow sensor. Watch the garage door there. Your mass airflow sensor every time you change your air filter. Um, if your air filter is staying clean, the map sensor should not get all that dirty. And this is the first time in how many years that I cleaned it, so. See if we can do a smoky burnout, eh? Ha! Not likely with this thing. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to say, oh boy, it's so much peppier and, and whatever. But the purpose of this test drive is really mainly to see if, um, you know, it's running uh, marginally better or also to make sure that I didn't do something that's gonna cause the uh, check engine light to come on. Now I did do a review on this Jeep and uh, my opinions on whether a person should buy a used one and I'll put the uh, link to that up here somewhere, wherever links go. Uh, you can watch that if you want. But uh, overall I've had good luck with this Jeep. has not been uh, unreliable in the, in the least. And, but I mean, it, we kind of baby it here. It's mostly been in the garage for its life. The last couple years it's been out. Um, so it is starting to show its age at 12 years old. Okay, that's 3000 RPM. Did it feel any different? Maybe. Uh, there was no um, jerking other than the CVT transmission, which that's what they do. Um, certainly wasn't, there was no misses involved. Um, and again, before I did the spark plugs, um, there were no uh, misses um, logged in the Autel, so that was good. I'm just gonna check my average fuel economy. It's been at 10.2 per 100 kilometers. Which I believe is 30 miles to the gallon. So let me calculate that out and I'll put it up on the, on the screen. But um, that's the mileage it's had for years, since day one almost for around town driving. A little bit better on the highway. Okay. So I'm not sure you can see this, but. We're on a closed loop, that's what CL is, which means vehicle's running at operating temperature and is uh, basically in normal status. And we can see, or if I, I went down to the, um, the uh, map sensor and it's running at uh, 28 kPa, which is where it was before I started even. So um, you can see that there. Close your mind if it's backwards. So really, uh, cleaning the uh, map sensor did not change anything. It uh, was already functioning the way it was supposed to. Um, with the change in the spark plugs, I think that's just good maintenance practice. Make sure you're getting optimum uh, fuel economy and getting all of the, uh, the horses out of this little engine you can. So um, just a, a good thing to do. So I hope you found this interesting. I got some more work I need to do on this vehicle too. I need to do some front end work 
need to do the front brakes on it. So if you're interested in seeing that kind of thing, make sure you put on a notification so that when I release those, you get notified that they're out. And don't forget to like, comment, share, pass it on. You know, if you have anybody else who's interested in this kind of video, send it on to them. And that's it for this one. We'll catch you later. Bye-bye.